Hey guys, and welcome to my Race to Division 1. I'm FIFA Vic for Mystery Gamers TV Sports Channel. Today, we are let's talking about, whilst racing to the Division 1, QA, Queen's Park Rangers, QPR, the Queen's Park Rangers, who are a London club for those outside the UK, and they have just survived their uh, relegation battle to stay in the Premier League, our top flight. Just a quick word on using QPR in FIFA in the head-to-head -head seasons, like I obviously have to do this commentary. They ha are actually definitely worth a try, guys. They have the right ingredients to be a really cool team to play head-to-head. -head. They've got loads of pace on the right-hand side with Sean Wright Phillips. They've got loads of skill on the left-hand side with uh, Adele Tarat. And they have good ball winners in Joey Barton in the middle. And um, up front, they've got Gibral Cisse, who's pacey, and Zamora, who is a hardcore nut job. So um, I really liked playing with them, actually, to be honest with you, more than Barcelona, which is the crazy world of FIFA that we all know and love. Okay, guys, so Queen's Park Rangers, first of all, let's just start by talking about Neil Warnock, who is the manager who was sacked by Queen's Park Rangers this season. I am a huge fan of Neil Warnock's, but it's the crazy situation in professional football at the moment where things that happen, getting sacked in real life and getting sacked in football management is an incredibly crazily different world, and how dare you sack a manager who has just got your promotion into the top flight out of nowhere, but unfortunately that is football, and probably on balance you've got to say... He w probably wouldn't have kept you up. The way things go, the respect he has for the top teams, the top teams that you beat this season, the way he would have set you up for those last five games, probably wouldn't have kept you up. And uh, that is the harsh reality. It was a dreadful, terrible thing to do that I don't condone sacking him. However, you've got to say, he probably wouldn't have kept you up. And Mark Hughes, who has come in, is a world-class manager and has done... And a world-class job, really. The the run of the last your last ten games, if you can replicate that in a season, you'll be top eight, top ten. You know, so QPR absolutely pulled it out of the bag. I, I think at one point I remember hearing someone on the radio say QPR needs snookers to stay up, which obviously, if you're familiar with snooker, is a term meaning you know you're so far behind in a frame, you can't you physically can't catch up on normal points. You have to get bonus foul points. And uh, I think that's true. I think at one point they did, but they got those snookers in the way of beating like top, top sides like they did. I remember watching um, them absolutely battle like mad to beat Spurs at home 1 0 with a great goal from Adele Tarat, who is a very, very good footballer, and I hope he continues to do well in the Premier League with QPR. So Mark Hughes has done a fantastic job, and he said at the end of the season QPR won't be in that position again while he's manager. And uh, fair play to him for saying that, and um, it's something the fans can hold him to in the future. But I'm really happy that QPR stayed up, because unlike Bolton, who did go down on the final day, I think QPR are a Premiership status side. And by that I mean they have the financial firepower and the fan base to really go far in the Premier League, to actually compete very, very highly to spend money. They apparently are very, very um, flush owners who are willing to invest in the club. Unlike Bolton, who don't do well for money and haven't really ever been competing in the Premier League, just surviving. So that is why I personally, before the start of the day's play, on the last day of the Premier League season, I did want QPR to stay up. Sorry to Bolton fans, but I just see QPR as a hotter prospect in the top flight. And it could be a good thing for Bolton in a way. They can rebuild apparently you know they've got a lot of players coming in and out so perhaps it's a fresh start for Bolt and maybe they'll bounce straight back as other teams have maybe Blackpool this weekend um, so moving on we have got to talk about him the Twitter king the, the absolutely mercurial Joey Barton this guy is such an enigma in football People that are people that he are talking about him say he's actually a really intelligent lad, he's a really nice lad. But I don't think we can dispute that Joey Barton has anger management issues, guys. He 
struggles he struggles in high pressure situations when something upsets him and that is a bottom line and for me what needs to happen at QPR I wouldn't sack him necessarily um, I don't think legally they can sack him for an on the field incident so um, what I would do is they're prepared to spend £40,000 a week on him or whatever they're spending on him or if you look at what they spend QPR money wise across the board then they spend a lot of money why aren't they willing to pay 40 grand a year not a week a year for a sports psychologist to work with the club on a full-time basis a sports psychologist in in the training ground in the stadium in the club permanent member of staff 24 7 i don't know why every football club doesn't have one um if they had one of those for, for, for that price they'd probably spend that on footballs and kits or they'd probably spend that on a part-time groundsman. You know, so get a sports psychologist and then it, he can begin professional treatment to improve his game. The weak, big weakness of his game is his, psycho his psychology. His, his mental, the mental aspect of his game is his weakness. And that's what needs improving. He is a very talented footballer. But until he can deal, work with the psychologist and improve his mental state he is not going to be as good as he could be. And that is the bottom line. I don't know why all football clubs don't do this. Look across sport at sports psychology and the influence it's had on professional sport. Look at golfers. Look at Ronnie O'Sullivan winning the World Snooker. Look at anyone you like in sport that's had a sports psychologist. Look at how it's improved their game. If you said to a football manager, I can guarantee you 10% improvement in your squad, they would do anything to have that. And I don't understand why they don't do this. So that is my opinion on that. I don't, I don't even know why that is controversial. Every club should, every premiership club should have a sports psychologist, in my opinion, to work with the players' mental state. They're not the brightest. They've got issues, like every human, and they should be dealing with those issues because they've got the money to deal with them. In the race, we are halfway into the next division, Division 3, and we're doing very, very well. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.